Hi there. Welcome back to our series on electrostatics. In the last lesson, I showed you what a van der Graaff generator looks like and how it works. We also learned how charged objects can affect one another. In today's lesson, we'll explain this behavior by looking at the electric fields that are found around charged objects and compare them to the magnetic fields that you learned about in the previous series of lessons. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to draw a diagram to show the electric field around a charged object and compare an electric field to a magnetic field. Let's first very quickly recap what we have already learned about objects that are charged with static electricity. In our previous two lessons, we have discovered that there are two kinds of charges, negative charges and positive charges. Opposite charges attract and like charges repel one another. Charged objects can cause things to move even if they are not touching them. Where have you come across a similar set of properties before? Right, when you learned about magnets. In the series of lessons of magnetism, we use the idea of magnetic fields around magnets to explain this behavior. In today's lesson, I would like us to do a couple of experiments to investigate the electric field around charged objects. I am going to use the van der Graaff generator to charge a number of different objects. When a metal conductor is connected to the terminals of the machine, it will become charged. When it is connected to the positive terminal, it becomes positively charged. When it is connected to the negative terminal, it becomes negatively charged. We will use flat metal plates as well as circular conductors in our experiments. We will also use some grass seeds sprinkled in oil so that we can see the patterns that the electrical fields form. Grass seeds are tiny insulators and will move in an electric field. In the first experiment, we are going to find out what the electric field between two oppositely charged electric plates looks like. I will place two metal plates parallel to each other in a dish containing some oil. One metal plate is positively charged and the other plate is negatively charged. Watch carefully what happens to the grass seeds between the two plates. Why don't you try and draw or describe the pattern that you see? Do you see that the grass seeds arrange themselves in straight lines between the two parallel metal plates? I have a diagram here on the smart board that may help you see the pattern more clearly. Each of the lines in the diagram is called an electric field line. The arrows that are on the lines show the path that a positively charged particle would follow if it were free to move in an electric field. Remember, a positively charged particle will always move away from a positively charged object and towards a negatively charged object. This takes place even when the charged objects do not touch. This force of repulsion is due to the electric field. In the next experiment, we're going to find out what an electric field around a positively charged conductor looks like. A conductor is connected to the positive terminal of the van der Graaff generator and then placed in a dish containing some oil. Once again, I sprinkle some grass seeds onto the oil surrounding the charged conductor. What effect does a single positively charged object have on the grass seeds? The grass seeds collect around the charged object, which now looks like a fuzzball. Other grains form lines that radiate outwards away from the charged object. This diagram may help you to see the pattern more clearly. Electric field lines radiate outwards from the charged object to form a radial electric field. Did you notice that the electric field lines are closer together near the charged object? This tells us that the electrical forces of attraction and repulsion are stronger near to the object. As the electrical field lines diverge further away from the object, the electrical forces of attraction and repulsion get weaker. What do you think the electric field lines would look like if the conductor was connected to the negative terminal of the van der Graaff generator? Why don't you take a shot at drawing a sketch to show the pattern of these field lines? Well, were you right? Check that your arrows are pointing in the right direction. In our third experiment, we're going to find out what the electrical field between two positively charged conductors looks like. Two conductors are placed near each other in a dish containing some oil. 
one conductor is positively charged and the other is negatively charged. Once more, try to draw the pattern that you see. Don't forget to put arrows on the electric field lines in your drawing. Was your drawing like this one? If it is, well done. I think you may just be getting the hang of this. In our last experiment, we're going to find out what an electric field between two positively charged conductors looks like. Two conductors are placed near each other in a dish containing some oil. Both conductors are positively charged. Here is the diagram showing the electrical field line pattern around these two conductors. You should be able to see that the electric field lines from the two conductors seem to be forced away from each other. They seem to repel each other sideways. Why do you think this happens? Think about what happens to a freely moving positive charge situated in the electric field. As it repelled and moves away from one positively charged conductor, it's affected by the other positively charged conductor, which also repels it, causing it to veer away to the side. Let's look at the diagrams from the last two experiments again. The patterns shown by these two electric fields looks very familiar, don't they? Compare the patterns of the two electric fields and these two magnetic fields. Can you see the similarities between these two types of fields? Why don't we have a quick recap of what we have learnt in today's lesson. Charged objects have an electric field around them. Electric fields consist of electric field lines. The direction of an electric field line is the path which would be taken by a freely moving positively charged particle in the electric field. Charged objects with different shapes have electric fields with different patterns. Pairs of charged objects with different charges have electric fields with different patterns between them. There are similarities between electric fields and magnetic fields. Now, with all this information still fresh in your memories, why don't you give today's task a try? Draw a diagram to show the pattern of the electric field that would form between two negatively charged conductors. Also, describe the similarities and the differences between electric and magnetic fields. In our next lesson, we'll explore the effect of electric fields on our everyday lives. Until next time, goodbye.